All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick this off. So, hey everyone, uh, I'm Ken Johnson. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm the Chief Technology Officer over at, over here at Invisium. Uh, welcome to our webinar where Brian Glass will discuss uh, leveraging the software assurance uh, maturity model uh, to help organizations formulate and implement a strategy for software security. Uh, Brian leads our secure development services here at Invisium, where he assists organizations with implementing or improving their software security programs. Brian has contributed to the OWASP SAM project for some time now, and we're happy to have him share his thoughts uh, with all of you. Before we begin, I do want to point out a few things. Feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, Brian has has uh, said that he will pause periodically throughout the presentation to answer those questions. Um, we will reserve some time at the end for Q&A as well. Uh, this presentation will be recorded. So if you need to walk away, uh, don't worry, we will be uploading this recording to YouTube later, our YouTube channel if you've never seen it. And then uh, at the end of this presentation, as we always do, we will provide a survey. Uh, the survey is short and helps us curate our content, so uh, please fill this out and I'll uh, give you a reminder at the end of the presentation. Lastly, I'll just briefly mention who Invisium is before I turn it over. Uh, we're an application security company. We're based out of Herndon, Virginia. We were founded in 2009 and we provide web and mobile assessments penetration tests. We provide training both in person as well as through our on-demand platform. We are an Amazon consulting partner and we provide a range of security services around AWS. And we offer code remediation where we not only identify security issues, but we also fix them for you. So that's a mouthful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Brian now. So Brian, take it away. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm based out of Chattanooga, and if you all haven't looked at a weather map, i am got a tornado watch at the moment, so hopefully it holds off for the next hour or so. Um, like Ken said, uh, my name is Brian Glass. I've been working on SAM for a good while now. I'm currently one of the project co-leads and conducted numerous assessments with SAM. Um, but honestly, you didn't come spend your time listening about me. You really wanted to know more about SAM, so... I figure we'll get started. So what is SAM? So SAM stands for Software Assurance Maturity Model, and it's about trying to help you structure what you have for a program or what you're doing and build a plan about how to improve software security at your organization. Uh, SAM was defined with flexibility in mind so that it could be utilized by a small, medium, or even large organizations doing any type of development methodologies. Additionally, this model can be applied organizationally wide or within a single line of business, or I've seen it even applied down to a single project. SAM's full of useful resources that help with evaluating an organization's current practices, uh, recommendations and suggestions for growing and maturing those practices, uh, providing a way to demonstrate concrete improvements and defining and measuring security activities throughout the life cycle. One of the big benefits of SAM is it's vendor agnostic. Uh, you can do SAM in-house, um, pull down the documents, the interview templates, and that kind of stuff, and use the toolbox that's provided to work through doing your own assessment and figuring out a project plan. Uh, if you want help with it, SAM can also, there's several AppSec consulting firms um, that have people who know how to do SAM assessments, and they can help you with, through the assessment, they can help you build out goals, plans, and roadmaps to be able to get your security program where you need it to be. So SAM is built on a few core principles. First, an organization's behavior changes slowly over time. So changes need to be smaller and iterative to really take hold and make a difference. It's kind of like me as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that to lose weight, I need to change my diet in small increments so that I will maintain it as opposed to attempting to do crash diets like I had in the past. Um, secondly, there is no single recipe that works with all organizations. SAM's built with this in mind and supports organizations building a program tailored to the risk profile, culture, and IT maturity. 
Thirdly, guidance related to security activities must be prescriptive. All too often security initiatives will fail due to lack of details, bad communication, and valid assumptions. Um, being able to understand what's needed, how to interact, um, that kind of thing are really essential for being able to get these things to go. And overall, the success of the program um, typically is based on being a simple, well-defined, and measurable. Um, if you look back in different industries, I mean, it was Edward Deming, I believe, who said that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So metrics become very important for that. Um, so why SAM? So one, uh, I, I like this quote from George Box, who's been called one of the great statistical minds of the 20th century. And he says that the most that can be expected from any model is that it can supply a useful approximation to reality. But all models are wrong and some are useful. So the point is, is you can't find a model that will exactly describe reality. There's too many variables. Uh, models are built in somewhat of an academic world or a lab or a vacuum, whatever you want to call it, and we live in a real world. But you can have a model that's close enough to be useful, and that's what SAM is. So if you look a little bit at the project history of SAM, uh, version one uh, was made possible through funding from Fortify Software. Um, it was called the Open SAM Project, and it was led by Praveer Chandra. Uh, after a number of years, um, it was a small group got together at OWASP and worked together to breathe some life in the SAM because it hadn't seen any updates in several years. So there is now OWASP SAM um, as part of an OWASP project. Uh, last March. In 2016, version 1.1 was released. It expanded on the original SAM by breaking up the core document a little bit. And so now there's a core document that describes the core model. There's a how-to guide that gets more into explaining how to apply the model in your situation. There's a quick start guide to help get off the ground and get moving. And then there's also a toolbox, which is admittedly an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but has some really cool graphics and formulas and ways to be able to help give you at least the baseline automation for data collection, some metrics and graphs. So in the a couple days ago or yesterday, we have essentially released version 1.5 of SAM, um, which incorporates a refinement of the scoring model to provide more granularity into the scoring of an assessment. So now an organization can get credit for all the related work done in a practice. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, and we're also we're actively working toward 2.0. So within the SAM framework, um, at the highest level, SAM is defined as four critical business functions. Each function is a category of activities related to the different nuts and bolts of software development. Within each business function, SAM defines three security practices. Each security practice is an area of security-related activities that help build assurance for that related function. And then within each practice, there are three maturity levels as objectives. Each level within a practice is characterized by successively more sophisticated objectives defined by activities and more stringent success metrics. So if you look at the framework, you can see that governance is more focused on the program itself. So it's looking at the strategic elements such as strat you know, strategy or roadmap, your policy and compliance parts, and then education and guidance. Stuff that's typically outside of the development lifecycle but is absolutely critical to supporting it. Construction, verification, and operations cover the core of the development lifecycle. So construction is covering what we would typically see for design and implementation. Verification is more focused on testing and verifying what was done in construction. And operations has ranges from managing issues related to software bugs to the infrastructure or environment hardening and, do, and operational management or enablement um, along the lines like incident response and things along those lines. So one of the examples we'll look at in terms of education and guidance. 
So it's a snippet from this practice within the governance function. So you can see the objectives across the three different maturity levels. The activities will build on each other and many times do, but it's not a hard requirement because each org is different and may have different solutions. So you can see the objectives and activities get more advanced at the higher maturity levels. So for instance, you have one of the activities at maturity level one is conducting technical security awareness training. Then at level two, you're looking at role specific training. So this is getting more detailed into not just, hey, security is important, this is what you need to do to help. It's to, as a developer, this is your responsibility. And here are detailed, you know, in your language, in your framework kind of stuff. And then when you get to the third maturity level, you're looking at establishing role-based examination or certifications. Where you're saying, all right, if we hired you, um, it's going to be a couple months until you can write code because we're going to send you through our training process to make sure that you can sh prove to us and show that you have the ability to write secure code in the framework to the specs that we have laid out for our organization. So here's an example within following along in the education and guidance on the second maturity level. So within the core model, uh, these are defined for each of the three maturity levels. So you can see the simple objective is at the top of the page. And then within that, there are the two primary activities spelled out with details and guidance related to those activities. Then you can see the assessment questions that are asked as part of the questionnaire to be able to help measure the, that activity. Results that you would expect to see out of the activity. Some recommended or suggested success metrics to be able to help measure the effectiveness or the completeness of the activity. Potential costs that you might encounter. Personnel that might be involved uh, depending on you know, how you how you do the activities, and then different related levels within the model that that activity may relate to. So sometimes with that you can see, you know, if you improve education and guidance, it can have an impact on design review or secure architecture when you're talking about security coaches for helping project teams. So within the, secure, the maturity levels and assessment scores, uh, as we mentioned, SAM defines three different security levels. Um, zero is basically the absence of a level. And then you move from ad hoc provisioning through increasing your efficiency to comprehensive mastery. So not everyone needs to make level three in all areas. Um, if you've run into Six Sigma or CMMI, the goal is not to max out every level. And honestly, that's, not a good, that's most likely not a good use of your limited resources. Um, one of the things I hate to admit as a security guy is that every dollar spent on security is a dollar not spent on business related stuff. So from my perspective, I need to provide value for every dollar that I'm asking somebody to spend related to security. So what the target maturity should be for each of the different practices and functions in, should be unique to your organization. There may be similarities based on risk profiles because of the industry or the geographic area you work in. Um, but largely there's no silver bullet in terms of everybody needs to be three. So previously in SAM and most models I've seen, the answers to questions are essentially yes or no, uh, which is great from an academic perspective, but in the real world, the answers many times lie in between. So in version 1.5, we've modified the scoring model to be able to provide multiple choice answers to allow for more accurate assessments. So for example, so you take the following question from the education and guidance level two, and you ask the question in the interviews or in the assessment, are those involved in the development process given role specific security training and guidance? So you know you've trained some of the developers and you'd really like to train some of the project managers and testers as well. So given that question, do you answer yes or no? If you answer no, you're not gonna get any credit and it looks like you're not working on it, but you actually are. 
So if you answer yes, you now get full credit and you may have issues down the road because you want to ask for a training budget to be able to train project managers and testers, but the dashboard says you already did it. So we realized that that was going to cause issues um, when you try and show incremental improvements in your map. So with the new model, you can now answer something like some or at least half. So you can get credit for what you've done, but you can also show have the ability to show improvements in your score when you finish the initiative and you get the other roles trained as well. So one of the things um, within the quick start guide, like we mentioned, that was broke out from the core model document is it's got a, essentially a small four-step process, um, lets you do iterative improvement steps. So step one would be doing the assessment, and that's through the questionnaire. Step two would be doing the gap analysis so that you could set your goals. Then you go through building the plan, which usually results in the roadmap for how to get to your goal. And then you start implementing. Um, and then given, depending on you know what duration you want to make each of these cycles, uh, I've seen them anywhere from three months to a year. Uh, then you go back through and you check, you know, check where you're at and say, hey, you know, if I update my questionnaire, where am I at? You know, are my goals still make sense? You know, has the business changed or has other things changed that would require changes to that? And so on as you go through the iterations. So if you look at assessing, there are a couple of ways that SAM gives you out of the box to do assessments. Within the core document, uh, there's a worksheet and for questions for every one of the security practices in each of the maturity levels, you can take the snippet out of the PDF and you can sit down in a workshop and print it out and everybody can circle the answers and you can collect them and have someone enter it into the spreadsheet later. Um, you can email them out and have them return them. Um, just we wanted to be able to have people, sometimes you just like having that paper in front of you and it's good for that kind of scenarios. So then you can also, within the toolbox that's provided, um, the questionnaire is in there as well. And within Excel, you have the ability to do drop-down boxes, and then also it, the model will be scored automatically as you go through answering the questions. You can see the rating on the upper right based on the answers of all the questions for that particular practice area. So your goal ultimately is trying to figure out where, where I'm at. And so there's an example of the scorecard here that basically shows you um, where you scored in the assessment for the different activities at each maturity level. So based on your organization, you'd identify initiatives to undertake that would, be, that would result in a changed or improved answer to some of the questions, which in turn would improve incrementally improve the related maturity score. So you could look through the different practice areas and you could say, hey, I'm like secure architecture. There's some things in maturity phase one that I'm apparently not doing. You could go look at them and determine, does that make sense for our environment? Is that something that we've missed to date and we could find that would be very useful to do? So as you go through this and you build this plan of which, what initiatives you want to take on, you can go through um, and figure out for the different phases, it's hot, like highlighted in the red boxes here, um, those different initiatives in that phase, you would be able to have a change to an improved score. So for instance, the, one of the questions at level three is, are developers tested to ensure a baseline skill set for secure development practices. Well, the current answer was we did it once um, some time ago, but do you decide to undertake an initiative, say, hey, every other year we are going to ensure that developers are tested um, to make sure that they can show, you know, that they can handle at least the baseline of secure development. So if you mark that, you know, say at the conclusion of phase one, we project that we will be able to answer this question with every few years. And you can see how the rating score improves at the end of that phase. And if you look further down the list, you can see there are different scores 
you know, based on initiatives that you would have in your project plan, um, different scores will increase over time based on how much coverage or how well you're doing um, in some of the different areas within that security practice. But you also note, like we mentioned before, that in this example they're not totally completed in order. So you can see that sometimes there, we're further along on activities that are generally considered higher phases. Um, and that is, we understand that there's not just one way to do everything. So for some companies, they might come up with ways that they don't need to do some of the activities in the earlier phases because they've already eclipsed them uh, with later phase activities. So then you look, SAM provides different templates um, for different types of organizations just to give you an idea to start from. Um, it also provides details for the different activities and building blocks for planning out roadmaps. So these can be tuned or tailored for your organization. So as a result, you can start building diagrams um, within the toolbox so that you can see based on you know, the different initiatives that we project to do over time, um, you can see your progress charted out and you can, um, looking at the different phases uh, over time to where it grows and it extends. So then when you're looking at the implementation phase, um, with, you can use internal resources, you can use online resources. Um, honestly, I mean, there are some things the internet's not good at, but there are some things that it is very good at. And there's a lot of resources that have been made available from the work other different people have done. Um, OWASP has been pretty good about collecting a lot of resources together. Um, so then that way you can see when you look at the different activities for the maturity levels, um, you can find uh, resources that are made available to be able to support those activities. But then one of the other things I'm seeing more of is looking at automating what makes sense the, in those activities. So today, um, from what I've seen, I mean, there are um, some of the OWASP guidelines um, there's a big, the developer guide's pretty large and it's very useful when you have the time to read through it. Um, but I've also seen a number of devs that they simply are not given the time to be able to do that research for that. So I'm seeing a lot of technical guidelines that are being built into the developer's IDEs so that they're reminded when they're in the middle of coding the application, it says, hey, you know, you're not allowed to use SHA-1 anymore or, you're, or you shouldn't you know, you're missing an authorization check at this place, or you did not validate this input. So from what I'm seeing is I highly recommend looking for, you know, automating solutions as much as possible, not so that they don't need the knowledge, but so that they don't have to retain a pile of security knowledge in short-term memory, um, that we're using the tools. So we're basically trying to use the machines for what the machines are good at, and use the humans for what the humans are good at. So I've talked about the toolbox a few times. Um, just wanted to give you a couple snippets of some of the things within the toolbox. So one of the worksheets is the interview worksheet. So it lets you go through, um, identify the project, the date. Um, the project may be the entire organization. Um, like we've mentioned, you can go anywhere from a project to a business line to an entire enterprise. Um, I've done SAM assessments where we did 12 divisions within an organization, so they each got their own scores and then did an overall roll-up. Um, so it was very interesting to see, you know, specifically within which divisions of that organization, what they had focused on, where they were at, strengths and weaknesses and that kind of thing. So this goes through and allows you to, you know, go through, answer the questions, um, pull down in the drop-down boxes, and it'll automatically score for you. So then in the scorecard, you can see this: the data is pulled in from the interview worksheet. And so then you can see how the maturity score rates within each maturity level of each practice 
um, rolled up to the practice level and then also rolled up to the overall business function level. Then we also have it or, um, displayed on somewhat of a spider diagram as well so that you can see what the coverage is more visually and it's not just pure text. So then the then looking at the next worksheet, then you have the roadmap worksheet. So what this does is this will move over or basically show you what was answered within the interview and then it allows you to project um, up to four phases out into the future. Now the phases don't have definite time frames yet because as I mentioned before each organization is different. Uh, you may want to do phases aligned with the fiscal year, you may want phases aligned with quarters. Um, it's set up that you can define what you want the time interval to be but it gives you the ability to put the phases in place. So then you could go through with each phase and say, you know, do, do I get to change the answer to some of these questions in these phases? And so when you do that, it can show you how your score is projected to change. Hopefully improve, um, and as you see from the green, those would be considered improved answers. But I've also seen at times where based on lack of funding or um, canceled initiatives that answers to questions might actually decrease. Um, those are usually highlighted in uh, red color, but those are also important to note where people need to see the impact of those kinds of um, events within your projected score as well. So as a result from the roadmap, you also get the roadmap chart and so this helps to visually represent what you would get from the roadmap. So you can see the, the progress over time um, and then it generates that um, spider chart that we had seen before. So also on the SAM, web, uh, SAM wiki for OWASP, you can find a lot of these resources. So you can find the download resources um, communities, uh, different OWASP summits, upcoming talks, related news, and that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of information on here to help you get started, continue, um, be able to contribute back, and that kind of thing. Working on the SAM roadmap, um, we have, there's an OWASP project summit in June of 2017 in the UK and it's about a week long and it's going to be long days but we intend to be able to hammer out a lot of stuff related to two. And so we're looking at potentially um, model revisions. So the original model was built almost uh, eight or nine years ago. So a lot's changed in software development since then. A lot more cloud, a lot more mobile. Um, and the current SAM can handle that pretty well but what we want to look at is what revisions might need to be made, what new things have come out, um, more of a focus on automation than there had been previously, and more metrics. Um, metrics can be the lifeblood or make or break um, how far you get with your program. <coughs> Excuse me. So then also looking at seeing if we can provide um, some more improvements related to building your roadmaps. Um, in terms of trying to estimate efforts better um, along those lines. And also there is a uh, benchmarking initiative that we've been trying to do. So one of the things that we'd really like to do with SAM over time is the ability for people to contribute their results anonymously to where we just have some basic demographics like um, it's an organization that's approximately a certain size within a uh, within a specific industry or geographic region. Um, then being able to say, all right, so what are other peers in that similar situation to me doing? Um, trying to help essentially crowdsource what's working, what's not working. Um, you know, be able to build more of a community out of it.
to where it's not just everything's done in isolation, but we can start trying to learn from each other. So what can you do to get involved? Um, there's mailing lists. There's an OAuth Slack as well. Um, if you use it, please give feedback. I mean, we we definitely incorporate feedback. That's I mean, a large part of 1.5 was feedback from people using the model saying we need a more granular way to be able to show improvements, to be able to show how we're doing things. Um, donating time. I mean, most every... Everyone I know of that works on SAM right now is a pure volunteer basis. Um, nights, weekends, I mean, we get support, different people get different levels of support from the companies they're working at, um, but we definitely don't get paid for this. We're trying to do this to try and help, you know, make a better, a more secure software development environment. Um, and it's going to be more and more important over time because it's coming from having secure software being you know convenient and important for identity theft to now you know that reliability of that software can start to become life or death for different people in different situations so it's absolutely important um, and, and SAM is something I think that can help it's one of the few things that exist at a program level that will actually help create more secure software so you can follow Sam on Twitter. Uh, we don't tweet a whole lot, so we won't fill up your inbox like crazy or your whatever Twitter calls it. I forget. I don't do it a whole lot. Um, but that was what I had right now. Um, I know for some people it's lunch and for some people it's you know late afternoons and depending where you are. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If you have questions later, you can send them to my email address here. Um, but that's what I had. Um, if yeah. there are any questions, or ten, Ken can take it from here. Yeah, no, I was just going to point out that we, you know, we we haven't gotten any questions so far. So if there are some questions out there, uh, get them in. And if not, then uh, you know we'll we'll take it out from here. Uh, while we're waiting for questions, uh, I just want to remind everybody. We will be putting this video up on YouTube for reference material later. If you uh, need the slides or something along those lines, you know, reach out to us. Uh, uh, contact at Invisium. I believe there's a uh, um, a way we can also send this out through GoToWebinar. And uh, we will, again, just a reminder, we will be giving you a survey, so please fill that out. It's like seven questions, yes or no. It's very easy to do. Um, haven't seen any questions come in, so uh, Brian, thank you for putting this together. Thank you, everybody on the, the line for attending. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we will be doing more webinars more frequently, varying topics, uh, so look out for that. Thanks again, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and end this session.